Okay, the name of lecture two is called dilutions, and whereas in lecture one we were preparing solutions of a given molarity, now we're going to be diluting solutions of a given molarity. So the concept behind this, let's just say, just like last time, that these circles are our solute particles, and let's say that just like last time the volume of this flask is 150 milliliters, and let's say in this flask we have 10 solute particles, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And just for the heck of it, this is not an exact calculation, let's just say that the molarity of this solution is 10 molar, that the solute particles is directly proportional to the molarity. It's not the way it works, but let's just say that. So remember this M stands for moles dissolved in liters, and we would say the word molar. Now this is going to be our initial concentration, um, our initial solution, it's going to be our concentrated solution. Um, sometimes we'll call this our stock solution. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a solution and in this case this solution is going to have the same volume, it doesn't always have it, but it's going to have a lower concentration. So we're going to call that our diluted solution. And the idea is, is that we take a certain volume using a pipette, and it's gonna look like one of these long skinny things. We're going to obtain a certain volume of the concentrated solution, put it in this flask, so some volume measured in milliliters, put it in this flask, and then once we put it in, so let's say when we obtain that, that has five solute particles, two, three, four, five, and we fill the rest up with water to whatever volume we like. And this is now our diluted solution. And since in this case, this solution has half the number of solute particles, in the same volume, its molarity would be half that. So what we're gonna be doing throughout this unit, or this section, is using an equation to figure out exactly what volume of the concentrated solution we need to create the diluted solution. And this is really how uh, primarily acids work. We always buy a stock solution of concentrated acid. Usually for sulfuric acid, it's 18 molar, and for um, nitric acid it's 16 molar and for hydrochloric acid it's usually 12 molar and we dilute these solutions down so usually once a year I'll have to buy um, these three stock solutions and we can use them for the rest of the year using this process right here. Um, there is a rule for diluting acids and this is a really important rule and it's real simple. It goes like this you take acid and you add that acid to water, this is good. That's what you want to do. Okay. If you take water and you add that water to a concentrated solution of acid, what do you think I'm going to write? Bad. The reason being, this reaction, acid and water, that's exothermic, uh, meaning it releases heat. So if you add acid to water, if this water has a high specific heat and can absorb all that released heat to the environment. Whereas if we add water to acid, the acid can't absorb that um, exothermic release of heat that we experience. So this is what we wanna do. We always wanna add acid to water. And I'll show you how this plays out in these calculations later. Um, all right, so we don't have any definitions, but we do have an equation. And this equation says M1, V1 equals M2, V2. In this equation, M is molarity, and V can be volume in liters or volume in milliliters. It doesn't have to be liters. Now, when we're using this equation, this had to be liters. But since we have a before and an after situation, kind of like Boyle's Law with gases, we can keep it in milliliters as long as we use it in milliliters on the other side. Or we can keep it in liters as long as we use it in liters on the other side. And just for your own reference, normally this is going to be something that we're going to see in milliliters. Because that's the unit of measurement on most of our graduated cylinders. Ooh, lost my toolbar there. 
So now, sometimes you're going to see this equation written this way. MC VC equals MD V D, where this C stands for the concentrated side and this D stands for the diluted side. Now this is an okay way to remember to do it, um, but what I really recommend is using this equation because we're going to be using this equation for lots of things during this year, specifically a process called titration. Um, and if you memorize it as MCVC equals MDVD, then you have to memorize this new one. So why don't we just remember that the one side here, this is the concentrated side, and the two side here, this is the diluted side. Okay. So let's go through and let's do some examples. In this first example, I'm going to ask you guys here, what volume, okay, and this volume is going to be in milliliters, of a 12 molar hydrochloric acid solution is required, okay, so this is that volume of the concentrated solution we're taking, to produce 150 milliliters, there's the new volume, of a diluted solution. And this diluted solution is gonna have a molarity of 0.2. And I want you, after you do this, to provide preparation instructions. I'll just say prep instructions. Okay. So the first thing I want you to notice right away is this is an acid. So we're going to be following our acid rules when looking at this. And that's something you really want to pay attention to. All right. So. Let's do what I did before. Let's write out the equation. Now, we know we have a dilution problem if you see two molarities and one volume in your problem, or if you saw two volumes and one molarity. So it's a very simple thing to note. I see two molarities right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my equation. My equation is M1V1 equals M2V2. I'm gonna list out everything I've been given. Okay. M1 is 12 molar. V1 is what we're looking for. Question mark milliliters because they said what volume. M2 is our diluted molarity. And V2 is the volume of that diluted molarity. So we're going to plug everything into this equation and rearrange it. And we're going to get V1, and I'm assuming you guys can go ahead and rearrange this on your own equals 0.2 molar multiplied by 150 molar divided by 12 molar. Now notice how the molarity cancels and we're left with the unit. And V1 here equals 2.5 milliliters. Okay, so that's the volume that you need. But the reason I wanted you to do the instructions is because when you do the instructions, then you get a real idea of what this means. Now we're gonna have an extra instruction here because it's an acid. And remember, we have to take this step with acids. We always have to add them to a little bit of water. So let's go here and look at the instructions. The first thing here is we're gonna put on gloves. Always put on gloves. The second thing we're here is we're gonna add a small amount of H2O to empty flask to the flask that we're gonna create the diluted solution in, okay? We're doing this so that we can add the acid to the water and it absorbs all of the heat, okay? Then we're going to obtain our volume. So we're going to obtain 2.5 milliliters of the concentrated 12 molar solution using a pipette. Then we're going to add 2.5 milliliters to flask containing water. And we're doing this because it's an acid. And then we wanna fill 
until we achieve our final volume, which is 150 milliliters. And we're going to fill it with distilled water, pure water, up to 150 milliliters. Now remember, we're saying up to because that initial 2.5 you add um, really takes up space. So we're really adding a 147.5 um, of water to achieve a total of 150 milliliters. And I should have said here that we're going to add distilled water and DI is a term for distilled water right here. So let's do another calculation here. The second one, this one, what volume, and we're going to do it again in milliliters. So what volume of a 3.5 molar copper two chloride solution, a blue stuff you dealt with a lot last year, is required, so there's our concentrated solution, to produce 250 milliliters, there's a diluted solution, of a 0 0.1 molar solution. This is our diluted solution, and I want you to provide the prep instructions just like you did last time. Okay, so when I look at this problem, I see two molarities, so I know that my equation is going to be M1, V1 equals M2, V2. My M1 is 3.5. My V1 is what I'm always looking for. That's question mark milliliters. Know how I'm always putting my units in. The College Board will knock you off a lot if you don't put units in. M2 is 0 0.10 molar, and V2 equals 250 molar. I'm going to go through and do all that calculation just like I did the first time, and I'm going to end up getting my V1 to be 7.1 milliliters. Now I'm going to provide my instructions. Okay, the first thing you should have noticed in this problem is that there is no acid. Okay. And because there is no acid like we saw here, we don't have to pay attention to our acid rule, which is right here. Okay. So let's go through, oops, sorry about that. And provide our instructions. So one, put on gloves. Two, we don't have to add a little bit of water because it's not an acid. So step two here is the same as step three above. Obtain 7.1 milliliters of the concentrated 3.5 molar solution using a pipette. And three, Add 7.1 milliliters to empty flask. And that's fine because if it were an acid, we added to the empty flask, then we add the water, that's bad. Okay, but since it's not an acid, we can add it to an empty flask. And again, I'm gonna make a big stink about this. This is because it's not an acid. Add to empty flask, oh, uh, and fill until you reach a volume. Doesn't really matter ex the exact language you use each time. Of what was our final volume that we wanted? Two hundred and fifty milliliters. So, in summary, the major thing you want to watch out for when you do, do a dilution is once you figure out this value here, and this is the V1 value, you want to look and see if it's an acid. If it's an acid in your flask, you want to add a little bit of water here before you go and put that solution in to absorb that exothermic release of heat.